Yeah, first of all, we moved to a brand new studio uh, last summer, and so we had to organize everything uh, new. We have a new acoustic, another sound, so it took a while um, to get used to this place. But we noticed it sounds much better than in the old studio. It's it's really great. Yeah. And uh, however, the first month, yeah, we just tried out new things, and um, the whole thing started three months ago. Okay. Before it was just trying new stuff, and um, the real new tracks, yeah, we, we did them during the last three months. Oh, I think there are there are various styles of uh, of sounds on the album. There, uh, the um, let's say typical scooter uh, things like like uh, heartbeats and um, um, and trans trancy melodies and melodies and whatever. Uh, and as well some uh, really more or less uh, experimental stuff. Uh, yeah, we had uh, there are two tracks uh, which are more like um, electro house. One is a German track called Lass uns tanzen and the other one is a UFO Phenomena. This is something we never did before, but we really like those tracks. On the other hand, we have typical stuff like Rick mentioned. Um, for instance, uh, the United Vibe is a classic, classical scooter track. And uh, of course, Behind the Cow, which is the first single release, it's uh, different, but typical at the same time. I think it's, it sounds fresh and new, but it's uh, typically scooter. And maybe to add one thing, uh, we use a lot of, lots of rock guitars at this, uh, this time. Yeah. More than usually. It's a little bit more rocky this time. Um, HP. Uh, Sits in his bureau, staring at the, <laughs> the screen, <laughs> surfing through the internet, <laughs> yeah, new, watching, new watching British, uh, car. British cars. Yeah. <laughs> Rick is doing nonsense uh, with the studio equipment, and after two weeks, we said, "Oh wow, we should start something." <laughs> and we have a new member in our band. It's uh, Michael Simon. He's a DJ, but I think Michael can introduce himself. Ah, he did already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but everything is said, I think, about me. No, oh, I think the working in the studio is nearly the same than with other persons. I mean, I, you, I met the guy, I met the guys a long time ago, so it was not, they're not new for me. I met HP in some clubs when I DJ, he visited me there. So, I know them before, so it was easier instead of coming totally in a, uh, in a new group, which and then the, uh, this helps me a little bit. So it was a good atmosphere from the start. So then I came in the studio and we worked together easily. It starts a little bit slowly because I had to get used to different work because everybody's engineers working different than the other. So. Mm -hmm. But Rick and me, we talked about this, and the good thing was we worked with the same music program. Okay. We hate both Cubase, so this was that was a good beginning. <laughs> <laughs> so now and then, then we figure out something, and then we started to work. Okay. Um, usually, if our product manager tells us to, <laughs> <laughs> to finish the production, then we know well we got not so, many, so much time left. But uh, no, uh, there's one one point when you're really satisfied with the sound, with the melodies, with the uh, melodies, <laughs> melodies, um, <laughs> melodies. Yeah, <laughs> too much into technical stuff, um, and uh, yeah, you say well that's all you can gift to the song and yeah. that's normally the point when we, when we decide to finish the production. Yeah, and when we start working on an album uh, we spend maybe three or four hours a day working and the last two or three weeks it, it's like uh, 16 hours a day and you just go back home, sleep for a while and then back to the <laughs> studio, otherwise it's not possible. Yeah. And I think um, 
we always had this like um, in, at the end of an album uh, production <coughs> we are really into the whole stuff maybe we need the pressure from outside the, the manager says you have to finish at this date and then we start really to get into it and then it really uh, works much better than in the beginning. Oh, the same favorite track? <laughs> no, I think it's, we like every track, I think. I think it's an album, I don't know, I don't, I don't really know every track on every album before because I'm a new member, but I think, or what I heard now, that we really don't know which is the favorite track or which track is not so good. I think they're really strong, the tracks, every single track. Yeah, we have uh, one, one thing, um, it's, uh, we work together with the Bloodhound Gang and Jimmy Franks uh, sent us some um, Who's better known as Jimmy Pop? Jimmy Pop. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah he's, he sent us some stuff and uh, we worked, uh, continued working on this and the track is called The Shit That Killed Elvis. I really love this tune and um, this maybe could be a single as well. There's another thing called uh, Lass Uns Tanzen. I love this track very much. Yeah, but like Michael says, I, I really, I'm really satisfied with all of them. And you? <laughs> yeah, I think it just happened. We had this uh, electro house tune, and um, I thought it's really difficult to use uh, usual MC stuff on this track. It didn't work, and so yeah, we we thought about that, and we never had a German song. Um, yeah, we had one, but this was only a special yeah. thing. Uh, and suddenly, they came up with the idea, with the idea "Lass uns tanzen," and it's uh, very minimalistic, and it really works on this track. And I think people really, I hope they will like it as much as we do. Yeah. <laughs> but it was more a joke. We just made it. We just listened to the track and made some jokes, and it happened somehow. Mm. It was not planned that we do vocals like this. Okay. Yeah, suddenly we needed uh, yeah something like a C part on the track. We often do this, and um, yeah, we came up with with the idea to use some something like a special hip hop track. And we really thought about who could do this. And I don't know. I think Michael came up with the yeah, idea. Don't kill me. I know there are a lot of people <laughs> <laughs> would hate this because they hate hip hop, whatever. But I think well, we just started to have it. To do something else, you know. It might nobody will do a hip hop track with a, with a techno beat, right? And then we thought we have to do something else to do not the usual usual way. And then and then we thought who could rap this? And we thought of course Fifty Cent and all these big names. But I mean, come on, we we have to be realistic. So we thought Fatman Scoop could do it, and he has a really powerful voice. Yeah. Uh, we really loved the tune, and um, but we couldn't imagine this would really work in the charts because at that time, techno music was more really underground stuff, mm -hmm. and this changed a lot uh, in the next two or three years. But we were really surprised and, and really happy because before we um, had a band called Celebrate the Nun, and uh, we produced. Yeah, two albums, a couple of singles, and nothing really worked. And then one day we, we decided to do something completely else, completely different. And with, with the techno music, at that time we went out every night to all different rave parties everywhere in the country. And we only wanted to do this music. In, in, uh,